when the world's rarest fly trap tries to eat, she actually hesitates before catching her food so that the fly can go off and bring its friends to the plant. Now this tactic works so well that she ends up catching a fly that's nearly as big as her. You see, this zebra looking fly is the biggest one in the garden and extremely rare to see. But between the small fly showing it where to go and the nectar of this rare fly trap, this giant poured fly isn't here for a long time, but a good time. But what's better than the biggest fly in the garden? One so small that it could fit between the gaps in her teeth. Flytraps have these teeth for a few reasons, and one of them is to let small flies out, but keep the big ones in. Yet seeing as this flytrap is using such a clever tactic to feed the only three traps she has, I don't think this fly is going home. However, there are still two other flies in this garden that need to be caught with a completely different tactic. The thing is, the three flies we have just seen all have one thing in common. They are extremely quick and agile. Yet, this also makes them much more careful than the common green fly. You see, because winemouth traps close slower than others, those zebra flies take a second to think about flying off because of how careful they are. So, for winemouth, moving slower actually helps her catch the rare flies. Yet, when it comes to green flies, well, they'll just jump up and fly off for no real reason especially when they are all in a group, like you'll see when the other flies join this one. So for Winemouth, catching a green fly has become her biggest goal of the season. And what makes this goal of hers so interesting is the fact that each new trap she makes has a slightly different way of closing around their food. In fact, now that this trap has opened up a few days later, it seems to have become much slower than it ever was. And seeing as this trap has slipped off of the support stick, it's basically throwing this green fly around the side of this trap. This should make it easier to catch this fly, seeing as it will probably stumble around and hit the trigger hairs. And it won't really get scared off by the trap closing around it, because everything is moving around it. Yet, that's not how Venus flytraps work. Just like most other plants, when a flytrap makes a new trap, the older ones will slowly die off as all the nutrition inside of it is used to help the plant grow. What this means for Weinmar is that her old traps become slow and then die off. However, this also means that Winemouth has made herself a bigger and better trap. With a whole bunch of new traps now ready to pounce on an unsuspecting green fly, we finally see what tricks she'll use to try and catch her meal. Wow, this new trap of hers is insanely powerful. Now, although she hasn't caught this green fly just yet, we can see how important the shape of a trap is for catching food. You see, fly traps are very similar to these toys or snap bands we had as kids. Just like a fly trap, these toys hold itself in place by having a part of it rolled forward. Yet, when that curled part of the toy rolls in front of the point holding it back, it snaps closed. And for Winemouth, this means she is much quicker than before and nearly caught that green fly. Yet, the best part about this though is that she can still catch the zebra flies. These zebra flies are extremely rare in the garden, yet somehow Winemouth has caught two of them on camera. However, are these new traps quick enough to help her catch a green fly? And let's not forget what I said earlier. There's also a second type of fly that she would like to catch in this video. The big and juicy blue fly. But until then, she needs to keep practicing on the green flies. She has finally managed to catch a green fly. Now, although it hasn't been caught properly, and might be able to escape, this is a huge step in her goal of catching the one and only fly she always misses. Yet, 
Will she be lucky enough to catch the juicy blue fly on her first ever attempt? Or will it also be able to escape like this damn green fly? You see, the blue flies are almost as careful as the zebra flies, but just a bit smaller. In fact, you can see how he's making sure that his landing zone is a safe place to be. Yet, this doesn't mean that this guy won't fall for the same tricks Winemouth has been using for the past few months. The thing is, once this blue fly climbs over the edge and makes sure that there's no danger around him, it's time for him to take a look at the meal that was advertised to him while on his daily flight. And just like before, that's all thanks to the tasty smell of nectar in the air. And this time, those bright rare traps that Winemouth is named after. However, these rare traps might not be doing much to help her catch this fly. The moment he started tasting that nectar was the moment he died. Aside from it being addictive, each sip of nectar ends up making this guy just a tiny bit more drunk and a drunk fly can't react very quickly. Now, as he slowly gets more and more drunk, he also has to follow the nectar up the side of the trap if he wants to get more. This is a perfect example of how fly traps use everything they can to catch a meal. Because if he has to walk up the trap, he gets closer to those trigger hairs. And if you didn't know, these trigger hairs are what makes the plant snap closed like I spoke of earlier. After touching just one trigger hair, the plant waits up to 20 seconds for another trigger hair to be touched so that it knows for sure that there's something to eat. And when you are a big, drunk, and now slow blue fly, there's not much you can do, even if the trap you're in is slow. Now, although Winemouth has caught a blue fly, she still needs to catch the green fly in order to complete the collection. So when two of them come looking to steal her nectar once again, she won't hesitate to prove to them that they will also become what's laying still in all her open traps. As this guy slowly walks up to this beautiful red wall of nectar, his friend also shows up to maybe get in on the action. Yet, walking over the corpse of your cousin should be enough of a warning to stay away. While this might have given this fly something to think about, this guy is making one last look around him to make sure that there's no danger nearby. Little does he know that the danger is all around him. In fact, as his friend gets some of his own nectar, he ends up seeing another one of his cousins laying still in this trap. And this is when he makes the best decision of his life. But this guy, this guy is hooked on that nectar. As he stumbles over Winemouth's teeth, he plays perfectly into her plan. Not only does he think he's safe from other bugs, but he's facing the wrong way. And if he wants more of that nectar, he'll need to turn around and walk up and over the trigger hairs. Please consider subscribing for more carnivorous content and send this video to your brother. If you've watched this far, you'd probably enjoy seeing four wasps go up against four fly traps. I'll see you there.